All right, everyone. So con continuing with our with editing our our manifest a little bit more. I took a quick moment to look up uh, some of these permissions. So I just did a quick search for the exact permission, and I found the file over on the developer portal that tells you every single possible permission you can put in there. There's many more than you thought possible. Although I find the documentation lacking in that, well, that's what it is, but exactly how do you use it? So for example, I wanted to see what, what was the get accounts again? So in this document, I just did a search. You know, I searched exactly for the term, and it took me right to, you know, some file inside of the developer portal manifest dot permission. But then I uh, I found get accounts ABC get accounts allow access to the list of accounts in the account service. Okay, and then if you click on it, it just kind of tells you the same thing. It doesn't really explain exactly what it does, how to work with it. Um, same thing with the broadcast sticky and such. So my permissions that I've got here, um, I suppose I will remove the broadcast sticky because from what I read in the documentation, it, we're not doing anything of the sort. So you can go back and remove that if you'd like. Broadcast sticky. And then it brings back my warning here, so I would just clean it again. But anyway, uh, that's one more item I removed there, the broadcast sticky. I'm going to select to clean the project again. And the warning's gone. One uh, interesting thing that I saw here, one of these permissions here, brick, required to be able to disable the device, very dangerous. So you've probably heard about, oh, my, my device got bricked. Well, there's an actual permission in the code that makes it a brick, that bricks it. Note, not for use by third-party apps. Very dangerous. All right. Is it for use? Maybe just Sergey Brin, Brin himself. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sergey Brin himself. <laughs> the founder, one of the founders of Google. Probably if it has that permission inside there, it's probably not going to get approved. Yeah, yeah. If you if you put that permission into your own app, you probably won't get into the App Store. Yeah. <laughs> so um, okay, I'm going to close. Uh, I'm going to go back. To, let's go back to the manifest screen of the Android manifest because now we want to finally create our <coughs> final file. All of these disparate files are going to be compressed into one final APK file, dot APK. Whatever the name of our file, dot APK. And that final Android package is what's going to be uploaded eventually to Google Play. There's two ways to do it. Um, I'll show you one way and then I'll show you the way I recommend. We've got File, Export. We've been importing this whole time to get a, a, a work in progress project into our Eclipse so that we can work. And then we've got Export, which will then actually export it as a final project. This one, though, is lacking a few things because you're going to export this file, but then it's not going to be properly um, optimized and such. So here's the way I recommend instead. I don't recommend the export. I recommend that you've got your Android manifest XML file open, and at the very bottom of the manifest screen, you've got exporting right here. Use the export wizard. This will accomplish several tasks at once, rather than export what the export does. Notice here, to export the application for distribution, you have the following options. Export the, use the export wizard or export an unsigned APK and sign it manually. That's basically what's going to happen if you go with export, file export, unsigned APK. We're going to get into this concept now about signing our application. Right now, we're working in a debug mode. 
We're working on virtual devices, on our own personal device, but now we want to get our app to the rest of the world. People that have not gone to the developer screen and turned off, you know, turned on USB debugging and all of that stuff. Normal people. Not that we're abnormal, but the other people haven't done this. So we don't want an unsigned APK. We want to sign our project, meaning that we are the developer of this app. We're vouching for this app. It doesn't have viruses. It's not a malicious software. It doesn't have malware, etc. And uh, all the revenue goes to us and such. An unsigned APK is, is incomplete because we would have to sign it anyway before we put it out for, for people to consume. That's why we'll use the, the wizard. Let's go through this. So click Use the Export Wizard. This is a screen that will do a quick check if there's any errors, which would also show up down here. Mine doesn't have any. Hopefully yours doesn't have any either. I've only got one project open, but if I had multiple, I can select here under Browse. So that's fine. I'll click Next. Here's where we have to do something not really complicated, but very important. And we don't need to do it many times. If we do this once, um, this will work for future times, like 30 years, literally. What this is, is we need to create a few keys and certificates, again, to vouch that we are the developer. Because what's to stop our competitor from creating an app with the exact same name as our company? This is what's to stop them. This is proof that we are the developer, not that other company. Now, again, Android distribution is different than iPhone distribution because you've got the gatekeeper in in, in iPhone, in iOS, that, that Apple themselves are supposedly reviewing every app and dotting all the I's and crossing the T's. Whereas on Android, it's sort of a, the other way around in that anyone can publish anything. And if there's a problem, then the community perhaps polices it and then the app gets removed. Whereas on the iPhone, iPhone, iOS, Apple looks at it. This is wrong, not published, the end. Um, here, we're kind of policing ourselves a bit, and this is part of that. Uh, we need to create first a key store or use a key store. And a key store is like our keychain. You know this keychain right here that I have? Where's my keys? This key, this keychain right here has the key to this room and my car and my house and all of that. No one else has this. No one else has the ability to get into my house. No one else has this key store. So we need to create something like this. You can create as many of these as you want, but I recommend once we create one, we continue to use it because, again, it's sort of on the honor system in that this key, the certificate that we're going to sign our app with is us. And it's less effective when you create a new one every time. So we're going to create one. So select Create New Key Store. And when you create more apps in the future, you're going to use an existing one. At the moment, if you feel that, well, I'm not ready really to go public into the real world, that's fine. You can make this up and say whatever you want. You can put Darth Vader's name in it. It'll work. Uh, but when you're ready to be real, you know, for the public, you want to set this up uh, properly. You know what's key here? You can change it, yes, via command line interface. You know, type some DOS commands here and there, and you'll be able to change it, sure. Now, uh, usually in a Unix system, when we create a key pair like this, it's stored in a specific place and so forth. Uh, and I expect that the same sort of thing's going to happen on Windows. But, of course, unless you do something you may already be planning to, to save this, it's going to get wiped out with, uh, uh, with the next deep freeze uh, reboot. Yes, so that's exactly the way that's, that's going to get answered is right here, location. Where are we going to save that file? So we will choose our flash drive, take it home, or we can email it to ourselves. It's a pretty small file since it's text. So right here we'll specify where to actually save that. So this is what I'm saying about we're going to create the, this thing, and if you are going to reuse it in the future, you need to remember to take this with you so that you can use it again. But if you don't take it with you, you create another one. 
although I do recommend you keep using the same one. So let's create a key store, also known as a keychain. Under location, let's browse. I'm going to select the desktop. Uh, if you have your flash drive plugged in, actually, I'm going to select my flash drive. If you've got your flash drive plugged in, I'm going to save it directly to my flash drive. If you don't, save it to the desktop and don't forget to take it with you. I'm going to go to my desk, I'm going to go to my flash drive into my project folder. And right there. And then you can choose any name you want. Any name at all. But I'm going to save this, let's say my company. Remember my project is com.campos.mysdce. I'm using com.campos as my main root for all my possible apps. Later on when I create, let's say, a game, it'll be com.campos.amazinggame. And later on when I create some other, you know, when I, when I make the, the dating app that gets me rich, I'll do com.campus.mydater, you know, whatever, uh, whatever name. So this key store then can be any name, but I'm going to call it, you know, Campus, or maybe Campus, um, Campus Keys. That would work fine, but what I like to do is call it something and then call it dot key store. Like we have a text file .txt, a Word document .doc, a PDF .pdf. Here we can have a key store. I'm going to call it .key store. That's fine. Or I can call it .key or .kst or whatever you want. I'm going to call it <coughs> .key store. <coughs> so what this would store is information about all possible apps that I'm going to you know, my verification for all possible apps that I'm going to create. I'm saving it directly to my um, to my flash drive. And on the next screen, I'll put in details about my name, my company name, all of this stuff, location, all of this sort of proof and verification about who I am as a developer. And again, for practice, you can just call this anything you want, fill it out however you want, and that's okay. I would suggest your last name dot key store. Save. And then as a password. Again, this is how you prevent other people from creating apps in your name. You've got your particular key store with your password. So make up any password you want here, as complicated as you want, but perhaps write it down or memorize it or something. And it'll probably tell you if it's too short. So I'm choosing where to save my key store and creating a password. If I was using an existing key store, it would be, okay, load up your, your key store file and put in the password. Very similar. Next. Since we're creating a key, this is the certificate that vouches for your app. So there's I think only two or three that are required, although it doesn't tell you in the screen, and, and many of them are optional. And again, you can uh, in the future change this, or you can make this all up or make it for real. So for example, alias, um, I called this Campos Key Store, but maybe here I can put the fuller um, name like Campos Apps. Do we have any idea where that gets seen? This, um, I think it's only internal because this stuff would here, this stuff over here would be showing up uh, when you're actually up on the store. Let's check if this is helpful here. There's a little help thing here. But the way you're using it, the alias is to give some kind of a label to uh, uh, to the key store itself, not uh, you know, not identifying yourself as a 
That's right, your company is in this section over here. So this is identifying, like I could have a company where I develop educational apps and one profit app, for profit apps. So I can have different aliases and then different companies there. So multiple keys in one key store. That's what this is saving here. So again, the metaphor of the key chain. The whole thing here is a key store. This one key right here is the alias. This one unlocks one location. This one is for one particular set of apps. This other key over here is a different alias, a different and a subsequent different password for different kinds of apps. So it, for most of us, it doesn't need to be that complex, obviously. We're making, we're, we're one company, we're making one app, so we'll have one alias. Um, you want to make a password here, which could be different from the previous password, or the same. It's up to you. Then we say, well, how long is this, uh, is this alias, is this certificate active for, or valid for? Um, 30 years? is fine. 99 years is fine. Uh, I believe it has to be at least like 10 or something. Yeah, so we put five years. So from the documentation that I've read, uh, some say put 25 years and some say 30 years, so it uh, doesn't matter, but I'll put 30. And then here more of the details of, of my actual company. Uh, Again, you can fill this out truthfully or not. Organizational unit, also known perhaps as your, what's the other term for it, your um, job, uh, job title. So let's say my unit here is developer. The organization, that could be the whole name of my company again. I'm using the same name up here just because, again, I don't have a very complex project. If I were making multiple projects, multiple types of projects, of apps. I could change this differently, of course. City or locality, state or province, country, US. So again, this can be changed, but you have to change it by getting into DOS and writing some commands. Uh, there's not going to be a pretty interface <coughs> like this for you to change it. So either set it up properly now or, or make it up and then do it properly later. I'll go to next. So then it asks, de enter destination for the APK file. Where would you like your final APK file, your final project? saved to. So I'm going to select Browse. It's going to save it, notice, with the name of my project, .apk, wherever I want. Uh, I've got my flash drive plugged in, so I'll save it there. I don't believe there's an issue if your project has spaces, but I'm kind of paranoid, so actually I'm going to remove spaces in my file name. Put dashes, underscores, no spaces. And you want to make sure it's dot apk. So we'll save that. Certificate expires in 30 years. It's going to get saved to my flash drive. Finish. Depending on the complexity of your project, this may take a, a while or not. And the sad part is that you don't get any fanfare that says, congratulations, you've built your app. You're a developer. Go make money. It just goes away. That's it. Now, if you have this APK file, other than sending it to uh, uh, 
to one of the app stores or uh, to a, a, a person who trusts you to uh, sell it on their device. Is there a way to open it up and to see it in the same way that we can through Eclipse and so forth, uh, or is that a one-way uh, type of uh, this impression? This file should be the final compressed project. And there's software out there that can try to reverse engineer it, but this is like the final one. You don't, you can't open it in Eclipse anymore, really, or, or any other IDE. It's like the final file. But there exist out there decompilers to try to extract what what they can. It's kind of like when Flash was a big deal. Yeah. Uh, then there was a program called Gordon that tried to let you take the uh, Flash file and. Uh, yeah, so you uh, can view the action script in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there, there's a. I'm sure there's decompilers out there, but this is our final destination. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, if I go over to my flash drive where I where I compiled it to, there it is, campus-mysdce.apk. And my app has been compressed down to 827 kilobytes. You know, as a comparison, the whole project that I've been working with at the moment, my whole project is my folder is three megabytes, uh, and it compressed it down to one file, you know, less than one megabyte, a little bit over three quarters of one megabyte. Question? After 30 years, um, you have to create another certificate. Okay. <laughs> so the app would stop working? Or? Yeah, the app would stop working because it's no longer a valid developer. So, you know, if we set it for one year, next year the app will stop working. Now, would you do things like that for, like, beta testing? If you wanted to uh, give somebody 90 days to, uh, to beta test it? Well, you couldn't do it less than a year. I don't think it's less than a year. But that's a way to do it, sure, the, doing the beta testing. That way, you know, who's ever, whoever you're testing with, you want to make sure it doesn't leak out to other people that early version. You could set it that young, and then it'll stop working after that time. But that's for that data is relative to when you've generated the key, not when you've uh, created the app. Exactly, it's to the key. Yeah, so I would do that. <laughs> Question. All right, so. Um, that was the wizard. Uh, again, it wasn't that complicated, right? Uh, if we wanted to do, if we had another app, uh, we would do the, we would open up the export wizard for that app again, and then the, the big difference would be that <coughs> we would then be using an existing key store. We wouldn't have to create those fields again. They're already there. They're stored in that file. Uh, so then we would load that file, put in the password, and it would just then go to the next screen, basically, and finish. And then it would compile the app. I was going to say something. Oh, okay. Um, so did everyone get a, uh, a compiled, a, a finished APK file? Wherever you told it to go, that's where it got saved to. So there's our app. Now, the next several things we'll be doing then is putting it out to distribution for the rest of the world. But I found interesting, uh, let's see if they've changed it. If you go over to the developer.android portal, And open the web and go to developer.android.com and I'll go look at distribute because we've been designing it, developing it, we're at the point of distributing it.
you should uh, probably mute your computer, please. Okay. You should mute your computer or something. I heard some. Okay. Right. Trying to get rid of it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you can just go to the speaker down here, click on the speaker, and click mute. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't. I wasn't actually watching, so I wasn't paying any attention. So there's a screen over here somewhere that I remember seeing that had alternate distribution methods. But uh, they might have removed that because it wasn't, it wasn't as interesting a, as you would think. Uh, so here's the thing. If you're over on the, if you're on the, uh, the distribute screen, there's of course a variety of documentation that you can read. Um, for example, over the in the Essentials screen on top here. There's various uh, sections you can read about app quality and if you're going for televisions or smart watches. Um, but there's under Google Play also there's step-by-step -step instructions what we've done here which of course go into more detail uh, and here it is, $25 U uh, registration fee. But the thing is that nowadays um, with Android you have three big ways to distribute your apps. Uh, two of them, well one of them official, one of them second official, and one of them unofficial. The unofficial way is, well, we've got this file. We've got this APK file. Let's just send it to all our friends and family. And that would work. You could send that along to people. The problem is, though, then you also have to provide them the documentation that says, okay, go into your settings, go into that screen that says uh, install from untrusted sources and all of that stuff. You'll have to tell people to basically sideload an app to connect their device and do all of this stuff and complicated. So your average user is not going to do that. You're not going to ask them to do that. You're not going to email your app out to people even if they want to help you. It's probably going to be more steps than is is really uh, necessary. So the other two ways are the official Google Play Store, which is built into every uh, Google powered device, every Android device. It's right on my home screen here, Google Play. Um, and that's the one, though, that requires the $25 registration fee. But that's going to be one of the more effective ways to get your app out to the world. It's the official place to get apps. Now, there's also a couple of other ones, but let's see if I can show a preview over here before logging in. Yeah, so you'll have something like this, this developer console, which I can show you what it looks like from my account, but here you're not you're not going to be able to see this until you actually buy, you know, the developer account, $25, one-time fee, which is not so bad. We're not going to do it in this class. I'm going to highly recommend it, and I'll show you various features of it. What we will do is use an alternative app store. Uh, but you're going to see something that shows all your apps, you know, what version it is, the price, active and total installs. So for example this one, Animal Translator 1.1 has a total of 185,000 installations. So this, this is from all possible regions that you are distributing to. We can say only distribute this app in the US or distribute it only in Mexico or the US and Mexico and Canada or all over the world. So you'll have how many total installations and how many active? Because people can download your app, try it out, and then uninstall it. So notice the ratio there. You'll be able to see ratings. How many of you have ever rated an app before on your device? So people will be able to do that to your app as well. Um, it's out of five stars, I believe. So this is 3.29 out of five. And it's gotten a total of 566 ratings. This is 4.15 out of 6,000. 
If you've got any crashes or other issues, they'll be listed there. So if, if someone loads your app and suddenly it crashes, that's registered. That information is available for you to see and to hopefully troubleshoot. The last update of your app, and is it published or in testing and, and so forth, pending. If you are selling your app, you'll get financial reports, any announcements from the system, and the settings of your account. So even if you're going to publish your apps for free, you still need to pay the $25 entrance fee to the developer portal, to the developer account. So I'll show you this, this screen in a moment, but <clears throat> if you want to look at it, I do recommend it. Let me go back because it's not buried, but it's, it's in there. I found it under the Distribute screen of developer.android and then under Google Play. And I was looking at Get Started with Publishing. I was also looking developer console just as a preview of what what that looks like internally. We need to set this up uh, for our developer information, contact information, and all of that. Some of it is required. Notice developer name, of course, and email address. This stuff will be visible to the to the real world, to the public. Uh, so if you don't have some sort of phone number you want to put out there. Um, have you heard of Google Voice? Uh, Google Voice is a free service that Google will give you a phone number. It's linked to an existing phone number, however. Uh, we might set this up ourselves, possibly, but it's, uh, it's you create an account, Google Voice account, they give you a phone number, or you can pick from some choices, and then someone can call that phone number and you'll have a record in your Google account about your calls and all of that and you can set it so that if someone calls your Google Voice number then you get a phone call it gets transferred over to your phone or you can have it so that it automatically goes to voicemail so that way you do have some sort of tech support phone number but it's not really ringing your your phone We'll see that once we actually are, are going to publish an app, there's various things we need to fill out uh, for the app. You know, the title of the app, a description, promo text, and such screenshots. We'll need to take a few screenshots of our project and maybe create a couple of uh, other, other graphics. And let's see, it says here, upload and instantly publish. From this console, you can quickly upload and publish a release-ready Android app package file, the APK file. The app is in draft until you publish, at which time Google Play makes your store listing page and app available to users. Your app appears in the store listing within hours, not weeks. Take that, Apple. So, um, within hours. Once your app is published, you can update it as often as you want, change prices, configuration, and distribution options at any time without needing to update your app binary. Now, I believe there's a caveat there unless they've changed it, where it says change prices. I believe if you set your app up for free, it cannot become then a paid app, because then that's bait and switch. So if you do sell your app, if you set up your app originally as 99 cents, then you can change it to 199 or, or, or whatever. But I don't believe you can go from free to paid, even though this says change prices, unless they've changed that recently. Your new version is available almost immediately. Existing customers are notified that an app is ready for download. Do you notice you've got your, you know, your, your device is telling you there's a new version? Or nowadays, a lot of them auto-update. So you found an error in your, in your app after some testing and it's out live? Well, just upload the latest version and within hours, it might automatically get updated on the user's f uh, device and they'll never see it. Or depending on their settings, they might say a new update is available. Click here to download. <coughs> We have alpha and beta testing. So 
So you've probably heard of beta testing. Alpha is before that. It could be, um, you know, internal. Um, however you want to define that. Alpha testing maybe is you and, and a couple of other people. Beta testing is then maybe a mailing list of people. You can do alpha testing, then into beta testing, and then production. Or if you know you're ready to go, just go directly to production to publish it. Uh, you can set your prices per region with taxes and all of that. In-app purchases, geo-targeting, you get your user reviews and such stats, so all of that. It even goes as deep as to tell you what um, version is most popular, what version of Android is most popular, that is, your user base, what, what are they com compromised? Uh, compose of. Uh, this is sort of related in, in web design. People would always ask, well, I want to make a website, what dimension should I use, or, or quality of graphics, what's the average website, uh, what's the average web page size, was a consideration for a long time. Uh, but now there really isn't an average because there's so many screen sizes and such. Same thing with, um, with Android apps. There's so many types of devices. Which should I target? The ones that are medium, high, low end? There are statistics. We can look up statistics in Google that they'll tell us what globally people are are running, but then it really comes down to locally what it, what's working for you. If I publish an app available for Android you know, 2.1 all the way to 4.5 or 5.0, and then I'm seeing my statistics that no one is really working with Android, you know, two point whatever. Maybe I'll make my app only available to higher devices. This one here is showing Android 4.0 and 2.3 as the as the biggest ones, and 4.1. So all of the documentation is here. We won't really be able to do anything with it unless you pay for the account. But as I said, there's going to be a couple of ways to distribute this. Any general questions so far on Google Play, the developer console? Where's the price ranges for apps? Like 99 cents to 199 to 3 to 6 to 20 bucks. I think there's a limit of the expense of the of an app. I think it's as low as $9.99, $9.99. I'm not sure if there's more expensive apps. Uh, over on the iPhone side, the limit to that was $900. And there has actually been a few apps that have been $900. Um, they were kind of joke apps, but people still bought them. Uh, but here, um, I believe $9.99 is the max. It's definitely not you know, $100. But um, the average is there's just this culture has built up of people, people don't really appreciate the value of these things anymore. Uh, whereas you would buy an album of music, you know, $15, whatever, and then everyone got on Napster and got everything for free. And then we had to be pulled away from that mentality of, you know, getting free music, which was 99 cent music. And then that trickled over to apps. To applications, to software, you know, you can still, of course, buy software that's that costs a lot. But now, because you can just, with a click of a button, download a new software, a new app, people expect it free, ninety-nine cents. You know, how many of you feel an app is too expensive if it's two ninety-nine? You know, ninety-nine cents or free is what most of us are used to. But they make it, they make it back in a different way. The in-app purchase, you can sell your app, ninety-nine cents for the you know, entry to the app, and then, oh, you want more gold? You want faster shoes? You want more whatever? That's an extra 99 cents. And that's how people make more money nowadays for those extra purchases. I don't believe you can, however, um, really get away with having a big, a big cash you know, requirement up front. I don't think people are really going to want to pay $2.99, $4.99 for your app because we're so used to the lower end.
So the other way to, to get your app out to people that costs you even less than $25 is over on Amazon. We'll look at that one in a moment, but let's, um, let's go to this address up here, play.google.com, play.google.com. This is uh, the web version of what you've got on your on your phone. You know, on your device, you've got the Play Store. It used to be called the Google Marketplace, I believe. And what's that? Android Marketplace. Android Marketplace. Yeah, Marketplace. And now they've called it the Play Store because it, you've got everything here, I guess. So. I've uh, got the web version, and then I've got the, the app version, and I can do searching and go to different sections and all of that. But um, this is the one that ultimately you do want to get on because it does have the built-in market, uh, the audience of it being right on the device. And let's take a look over here. Um, under, if you go to apps, select the filter for apps, and then you can search uh, instructor Victor. You can do that on the web or on your device. And so you hopefully should see uh, an app, Instructor Victor, from uh, my company, PMD Interactive. It says free. Uh, that's a proof of concept app that's based on the things that we've learned in these classes. It's all HTML5 and CSS3, jQuery Mobile, all of the stuff we learned. And it's gone from beginning to end about uh, design, develop, distribute. It's actually out there in the real world. You know, if you search for it also on your device, you should you should find it. So when you look at it either on the device or on the web, you're going to see all of these items that you eventually have to take into consideration once you're ready to publish. You know, this app icon here. Remember a while ago we created, or last week, we created the, the icon for the app, and the documentation said you also want an icon that is 512 by 512 pixels. That's that icon. I've set up a company profile here, so I've got a, a link here, and all the apps that I put out there are, are here. It's under the section of education. We have to decide what, what our app would fit under. Uh, then there's the ratings, and they've uh, actually added uh, Google Plus integration, so you can get, uh, you can get uh, some, some traffic, some some buzz from Google Plus, and then screenshots. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna need to make some screenshots so people can see what is this app about before I download it. That's not too hard to do. Uh, this one's got a video. You don't have to play the video since you have sound, but um, you know you, this is uh, extra extra work to do. Uh, you should be able to see this on your device also. If you've got some sort of game, perhaps show gameplay, uh, this one is showing what's this app about before someone... You know, even if the app is free, people's time perhaps is not. It's valuable. So people can check out whether they want this app or not. Watch a video. A description. You've got the reviews. You can do what's new. You can write what people can expect from the from that release of the app. Notice I'm using version numbers like this. Uh, this is that version number that we saw. Remember there was ver uh, the code version code I believe, and then version number. The code is the one that's one, two, three, four, five. But then that other one was a string that could be anything. And on this one I'm using this 
nomenclature, 0 0.1 point the date. That works, that's fine. So that when I update the app, perhaps I'll put a 0 0.2 and then that date, whatever you want to do it. And then if it's, you know, if I upgrade from, because this is using a uh, phone gap, you know, 2.9, um, if I then go to the, the latest one, uh, 4.0, I could do 1.1.2015, whatever. So you can name that however you want. This various other detail here that you'll need to set up. Permissions. Let's see, what are the permissions of this app? Uses location, full network access, etc. So that's what we're setting up back on Eclipse requires Android 2.1 and up. So you can go to a pretty large range of devices. There's a privacy policy. That goes over to our site. There's an email right there. Visit our site, etc. So this is a completely legitimate app that anyone can download through official channels. Uh, you've got your app that you create. We do that export wizard and then put it out to the world. But again, $25, even if you want to give your app away for free. You can look at the other app that is here. Again, built upon the same sorts of technologies we've learned in this class. This is our store listing, etc. I've got a new version of this one coming up soon. So who's ever downloaded this will get the update that a new version is out. All right, so any questions so far? I'm not going to ask you to create an account here because it's $25. But what we will do together, so that you have the full beginning to end process, is we will create an App Store account over at Amazon. Amazon sells books and CDs and software and baby food and everything, and Android apps. People can also get apps on Amazon, and you can put them out for free or 99 cents or whatever you want, and you don't have to pay at all for that. There is no price for a developer account on Amazon. That's really cool. You don't have to pay to put out your free or paid apps over on Amazon. Couple of drawbacks though. Um, in order for you to get any of those Amazon apps, you have to search the Amazon App Store. And by default, most or many devices don't have the Amazon App Store built into the device. You know, I bought this LG 730 and it had Google Play right on the front, but it didn't have Amazon. I had to, you know, download the Amazon app. And then I get the whole world of Amazon apps. Uh, however, what are some of the devices that do have the Amazon App Store built in? Anything by Amazon, like Kindle, the Fire Tablet, and the Fire Phone, any Amazon device. And uh, Kindles are very popular. So all these Kindles have the, app the Amazon App Store built in. There you go. You have a whole target audience to get in, to possibly get into. So let's go over to Amazon.com for a moment. See? They sell everything. They sell their own tablet. They sell their own Android-powered tablet. It's their version of Android because remember, Android is an open source operating system that anyone can take and change and improve upon it and repackage it and all of that. And so that's what Amazon did a few years ago. They took the core Android code, they repackaged it, and it's got Facebook and Twitter and all of that, but then it focuses more on buying stuff from Amazon. Um, do you guys know that Amazon sells their own cell phone, their own mobile device, the, the Fire? Amazon Fire phone, whatever it's called. It's not doing that well, but uh, it's out there. And the big thing about it is that it's very much linked to their Amazon store. So it's pretty advanced because 
very easily you can you're supposed to be I've never used one but you're supposed to be able to use your fire phone and then you know scan something and then it takes you right to buy it on Amazon it's all built into the whole Amazon infrastructure um, came out uh, less than six months ago and it used to be right on the home page no oh, there it is there. no that's the tablet it was right on their home page for several weeks and it's still there somewhere but it doesn't seem to be taking off uh, but anyway you've got uh, hopefully your screen looks the same as mine. At the top, do you see a bar here that says App Store for Android? If you don't see that, you can also, I guess, shop by department, apps for Android. And I guess also search apps and games. So there's lots of ways to get to the apps version, to the apps store on Amazon. And I'm going to click uh, Shop by Department, App Store, and I'll just go to Apps. Now here we can look at something interesting. So uh, up on search, make sure it says apps and games, and then uh, type SDCE. SDCE. If you go, if you do that search, and uh, if you if you put it on the apps and games there, you will see apps that were created by previous uh, classes. Those that have gone through the series of three months of classes, uh, they created an app very similar to yours, and they've gone from beginning to end. These are students from previous classes that have, that have published their apps. So I can go look at, you know, my SDCE fits and look at her app over here and you know screenshots and all of that so everything that you've created you will be able to publish now obviously what we're doing in this class is more of a of a proof of concept are we able to do this these are all of the steps this is what's required to do this kind of app um, it's not an Instagram kind of app, it's not Facebook that requires much more work, much more programming, but I'm showing you here that you would be able to do this from beginning to end. You have an idea that you can go from beginning to end. You can actually publish it. So we will do this. And again, you can decide to go all the way if you want. You can remove this, of course, if, if you don't want to be out there. But these students, they've got their real apps out there. You can download them. You can give it ratings, you can the real apps. You can preview them. And so we will do that. We can put it on both. We can per first publish our app in um, on Amazon and then later on, you know, save up a little bit and then publish and then buy the developer account for, uh, for, for Google Play and then publish there too. Since the two are not connected and somebody would, let's say, uh, post it on uh, Amazon, uh, what would stop somebody from putting out a fraudulent app on the other store? Well, it's again about the the certificate that you create, and then the yeah, listing. Not looking at it necessarily, we're not comparing notes on that sort of thing. No, that that's 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 true, but um, a lot of this is, so to speak, in, on the honor system. In that notice that this app, you know, these there's three apps that look they're exactly the same on first blush. You think, well, what's the official one? Notice it does have that the developer is that developer compared to those. So 
this is the, the pro and the con of, of publishing uh, Android apps in that, yes, that could be a possibility that there is a fraudulent app over on, on Android because it's a bit of the Wild West. Uh, but if you have your, you know, your store listing properly set up with all your credentials and such, that should help. But there's no actual... I guess what I'm Geek. thinking is something popular like Instagram or something like that shows up in the Google Play Store, but it's they have not yet put it in the Amazon Store, and then somebody could just, for no fee at all, put up something that looks like it, and uh, um, and you know now that one's a free app, but if it was one uh, paid associated with it, they could get money before people started <coughs> noticing it. Yeah, definitely. Now somewhere over here there is uh, something like report this app. There's always that sort of thing that says, you know, lodge a complaint or feedback or, or something around here. Uh, so there's that way, there's that community self-policing itself that people will find out quickly, hey, that's not the official Instagram app, and then they'll report it. So this is the opposite of what I was saying about over on, on iOS. Apple has to approve you to get out to the world, so they'll stop all the, all the fraudulent ones. Here, anyone could put the fraudulent one, but then it's up to us that we see the fraudulent one and report it, and then it gets removed. And yes, perhaps a few people did buy it, but then there's refunds. So it is. it does have its pros and cons, but there is that possibility. A fraudulent app could get through temporarily. Somewhere on here, or on the device, or on the store itself, you will see, you know, report this app. Okay, so we will um, we will go forward through this. We will let's create an actual Amazon developer account. So, any questions before we get started? Uh, again, you can make this for real, you can make it fake, you can start setting it up and complete setting it up later. It's up to you. You can just follow along and that's fine. But uh, hopefully you can... Um, you'll, you'll do as much of this as, as I will. Let's go up to developer.amazon.com. developer.amazon.com So developer.amazon.com. If you didn't know, actually, Amazon, yeah, they sell a lot of stuff, but they also are part of an infrastructure of the Internet. They've got their Amazon Web Services where you can run websites on it and all of that. But what we care about is here, the second option, Amazon App Store. Amazon App Store allows developers to distribute and sell their Android and HTML5 web apps to millions of customers in nearly 200 countries. The Amazon mobile app SDK provides API tools, etc., etc. Um, you can monetize, so you can sell your apps or give them out for free. So when you're on this screen, click on Amazon App Store. You can, uh, on this portal here, you can test your app before you commit to anything. You can drag and drop your APK here and it'll run a test and send you a report that says as is your app will work on this device and that device and this device. So that's something you can do which is optional. Um, but this is uh, if you just want to get a preview, will I, re will I need to redevelop my app if it doesn't work for a particular device? So I'm going to skip that. You could do that, of course, as you, if you want. 
And nowadays, you've also got Amazon Fire TV. So they send a little device that you can plug into your, to your TV and turn it into an internet-powered device. So you could be creating apps that get sold there. So a, a lot of times nowadays, I see smart televisions being sold. Right? that they've got apps built in. It's got Hulu built in. It's got Netflix built in. Right now, uh, I don't know if there's TVs that have the Amazon store built in, but there's always the, the extra device. But most likely in the future, eventually Amazon will make deals with Samsung or Sharp or whoever and put out TVs with Amazon built in, and then your app could be, could be there too. So we'll do this. At the top right, it says sign in or create a free account. Let's click there. I already have an Amazon email that I used to buy stuff, but I'm going to create a brand new account with a different email address just for my developer needs. So you can use an existing email address that you have set up with Amazon if you already have that, or create a new uh, account here. So I'm going to say, I'm a new customer. Yes? Do you have on the very top right of the screen a sign in or create free account? Uh, That's right, developer.amazon.com. All right, so then I'm going to select I am a new customer. And uh, you want to put in an email address here. So um, hopefully you, you have an email address to use here. Um, let's see. I'm going to use maybe this one. OK. So you, you use an email. Say that you're new. Right here, I am filling this in as myself. Later on, I'll have the ability to set this up as my company. Or if I'm my own company, then that works as well. But here, then, I'm going to put in my name, your name, and then create a password. Questions? Maybe because we're all doing it at once, we have to it. But is there perhaps a All right, so I'm going to fill that stuff in and select create account. Now we can fill this out as much or as little as you want, uh, but we've got several things to, to think about here. Um, we, if we're going to be selling our app, you know, ninety nine cents, a dollar ninety nine, whatever, we're going to be collecting revenue. So there is a part that would be asking us for tax identity. 
because you know what do they say about death and taxes and apps? So we uh, we might fill that out or now or later, and it's not that complicated to fill out. But um, again, you can fill out as much as you want at this point, uh, especially the stuff that's required. So uh, under profile information, we've got various things to look at. So it recognized my region, my name, etc., phone number. Again, um, this can be changed, of course, but I'm going to put in a phone number. I have a Google Voice phone number. I guess at the moment you can just put 555 whatever. You know, just make that up for the moment. It should, it should let us developer name or company name. So this is a name that will be displayed on Amazon when it says, you know, this app by this company. So, um, I don't know, I'll make up a name there for my company. Description, 4,000 characters maximum. So here I could be writing, you know, Campos Apps is uh, been around since 2012 and we publish educational apps for all needs. And, you know, some sort of marketing, some sort of advertising here. You might not really have anything off the top of your head that you can write. But notice it's optional at the moment. But again, I would recommend you, you fill out as many of these things as possible to appear more as a legitimate developer. I'll say I'll, I'll write that in more detail a little later, but I'll just write something like founded in 2014, Campos Apps strives to create the most useful and magical apps for Android. We put the amaze in Amazon. Um, An address here, so again, uh, you can make this up at this point and change it later. Uh, you could have a P.O. box, etc. We've got some sections over here for customer support, email, phone number, and website. So again, since this class does go from beginning to end, probably none of us have thought about this. You think, well, here's an app, I'm going to download it, I'm done, I want to do that too. But there's all of this setup that goes behind the scenes. This stuff here is optional, but again, it's highly recommended to, to fill this out, especially if you're going to be legitimate. What sort of email is going to be displayable for people to send questions to. My app is broken, help me. This is an email. It's, it's optional though. Uh, is there a phone number people can call to get tech support? And is there a website for people to, to go reference for help? For all of these, I'm going to say I don't have that really planned at the moment, so I won't fill them in. But I do recommend you, you fill those out at some point. I filled in what was required, the little red stars, and then I'll save and continue. All right, so this is the app distribution agreement. If you scroll down here, it doesn't seem that long. Actually, there's a scroll bar here. <coughs> I haven't really read it completely. I just bounce here and there. Uh, look at this. Amazon fees. If a developer hosted PC game or software that has a list price of $9.99 or less, you make any products, content, or services available for purchase other than as an in-app purchase, you will pay us fees of equal to 30% of the gross revenue you receive from the sale of those developer sold items. Blah, blah, blah. So it's free to put your apps out on Amazon, but they take 30% of your sales. Because all of this infrastructure costs money uh, to show up on the home page of people's Kindles, to have the bandwidth to, to distribute the app from their server to your device, to be available on 200 countries, 
24 hours a day. All of that costs money, so they take 30% out of your sales. Okay, so they, they're, get, they're the ones getting paid for it, and then they give you the balance? That's right. Hold on, read the B right there. What? B. What is B? You will pay us. You will pay us Amazon fees if they're. Yeah, yeah. So they have to pay. You have to, you know, whatever thirty percent they take, they need to get paid for that first, and then you'll get yours. They get the money when someone buys an app. Money goes to Amazon first. As a holding, you know, sort of as an escrow, they get it first, and then you get it eventually. Your cut. And then they and then they wait for you. To send them back to 30%. Well, I, I believe that, see, this is talking about developer sold Sorry, items. Developer sold item. No, but that is us. We're developing, we're the developers, we're selling our items. Um, let's see, you will make payment to us via EFT or other method. Uh, I'm sure. Elsewhere in this, it, it explains itself, but to my knowledge, you know, you're, you're, someone's going to pay for it, Amazon's going to take the whole amount, they're going to take their piece, and then you're going to get your piece. The timeline of all of that, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but everyone gets their cut. How much does Google pay to? They're also 30%, I believe. So not only do you have to pay to sell your apps, but then you also have to do that 30%. Oh, I don't know. Um, I haven't put any paid apps up here, so let's see if there's anything about payments, home operations, Royalties, distribution schedule, royalty for each app, for each sale of an app, the responsible Amazon party will pay you a royalty calculated as follows. So you get 70%. No royalty is available for free apps. Royalties for certain in-app things are subject to additional restrictions. Delivery of apps. Product info, grants of rights. I would just give you an Amazon credit. <laughs> well, you'll use it, you know, you'll give it back to them right away. <laughs> so we'll we'll have to look around here somewhere where exactly it says when you get that dispersed. <coughs> So this will be great, something to, you know, uh, curl up by the fireplace, read this thoroughly, and then, and then agree to it. So I'm going to say accept and continue. Do you plan to monetize apps? So again, this is the thing, are you going to be selling apps, giving them away? Are you going to put ads in your app? That's another way people make money. Let's say you have your app, and then you get a little ad banner at the top or bottom or wherever that pops up, and then if people click on that, accidentally or not, then you would get some amount of money from that ad network. If we do select yes, then it's going to ask us this, this a bunch of stuff here. For example, well, where can we put the money? Give us your bank number. and routing number and social security number and all of that. So obviously if you think, well that's pretty intrusive, yes, things usually are when it comes to money, even 99 cents. So if you are going to be selling your apps, and I believe you can change this later if you want to start selling your apps. So at the moment I'm not going to ask any of you to put any of this info in here. We'll say no, we're not going to monetize, so it doesn't ask us for all of that. Save and continue. This is a part about tax identity, which you can do ask me later because it's going to say, 
um, I have to verify some information. Again, for tax purposes. You would have to fill in, uh, are you a business or an individual, your personal info, kind of info for your bank, tax ID number, all of that stuff. It's a lot to fill in, but not very complicated. You just have to have the documentation, you fill it in. This is all, again, related to, to taxes and such, because it's, it's money exchanging hands. And so it's all got to be above board. And again, you think every time you go to get download an app, you just download it, pay 99 cents, and you're done. Well, there's a lot of infrastructure going on behind the scenes, and this is it here. I'm going to say, ask me later. I need to collect those documents. You will be required to complete the interview before you can submit a revenue generating app. So again, if you're going to sell an app, that's that stuff definitely needs to be filled in. But I'm okay for the moment. I'll fill it in later. So there we go. We're an Apple. Uh, we're an Amazon app developer. We've got an account. We can start to put our, our apps there. There's still things to fill out with our app, especially if we're selling stuff. But uh, at this point, we'll take a we'll take a break. And when we come back, well, okay, we've got an app. We've got an app store. Let's put our app on the app store, and we'll see what that entails. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, it's 8.32. Uh, Let's take 10 minutes again, and we'll be back at 8.42, and we'll see what we do about adding the actual app to the store.